and welcome to the second episode of Archie Facts. In this episode, we're going to talk about DTI Online Business Registration BIR Business Registration SEC Online Registration of Business Name Business Structures The DTI Online Business Registration First of all, what is a business name? It is a name you give to your enterprise and shall be used in any transaction connected to your business. In order to be registered with DTI, your business name must have a dominant name and a business name. Sole proprietors and partnership or corporations can apply for DTI business registration. Here are the corresponding costs for DTI business name registration. Steps in acquiring DTI business name online. First, visit the DTI website. Accomplish the owner's information form. Click Proceed after the pop-up. Identify the business scope. Select a dominant name. Then, select a business descriptor. Check name availability. A pop-up box will then appear offering two choices on how you want your proposed business name would be arranged. Confirm details to be assigned a reference code. Fill out business details. And confirm these details. Pay the registration and transaction fees. Download the certificates at Transaction Inquiry. Print the DTI certificate. BIR Business Registration For self-employed individuals, you'll need the following. For corporations and partnerships, you'll need the following. Here are the steps for applying BIR Business Registration BRDO. Complete all the requirements and proceed to the RDO where your business is located. Secure a queuing number for the new business registrant lane. Submit the requirements and pay the registration fee. Apply for the transfer of registration, if applicable. Pay the registration of 500 pesos plus 30 pesos documentary stamp tax. Claim the COR, ATP, and ask for receipt notice upon approval. Attend the scheduled taxpayer's initial briefing. Here are the steps for applying BIR business registration online. Visit the BIR NubizReg website. Download the forms and document samples from the website. Prepare all necessary documents.
Answer the tax type questionnaire. Pay the registration fee and documentary stamp tax. Get the email address of your RDO from BIR NubizReg website. Email your documents to RDO. Pick up your certificate of registration. SEC Business Name Registration. For self-employed individuals, you'll need the following. For corporations and partnerships, you'll need the following. Here are the steps for registering business name in SEC online. First, visit SEC Aspark website and choose from regular processing or one sec. Read the terms of use. Fill up the application form section. Review the details and send OTP to your email. Wait for your business name to be automatically reviewed by the system. Fill up Section 2 or the company details. Then fill up Section 3 or the capital structure. For corporations, you have to provide information of the following. Fill up Section 4 or the company officers. Read the consent and truthfulness clauses. Click on the confirm button and then the save and proceed button. Upload supporting documents. Review your application. And lastly, submit your application. Wait for the email from the SEC. After a successful payment, 
you will be directed to this page. Get your original certificate of incorporation or partnership. For regular processing, For one sec, you are technically already registered with the SEC, but you still have to get your original certificate within one year from the date on your interim certificate. Sole proprietorship. Why? Because it was the most logical and practical option for me back then. While choosing your right business structure depends on your own personal context. By definition, sole proprietorship is a business structure that legally has no separate existence from its owner or founder. Though Pond currently is a sole proprietorship, how will we run it in the future? may not be in that case. The goal for Pond is really to establish it as an independent um, institution for principal creatives, and I will be one of the members. Hence, um, my name is not in the studio's name. However, for, for startup businesses, especially for architectural firms, sole proprietorship has a very obvious advantages in terms of um, I believe operations and liabilities. During the infancy stage of any business, one of the main keys on how to jumpstart is the quickness in your decision making and in setting up your processes. In sole proprietorship, this is very achievable because you have no partners to consider. Hi, I'm Steffi Go. I'm Eldra Nino. And together we're SGM and Architects. So we have a few questions for us. The first is, what made us decide to partner together? Was it always the plan? Um, we were mentored under the same company, so we share the same values towards design. Uh, we were also assigned to the same projects under that previous company, so it was really more on just building on that working relationship, that existing working relationship. So the second question is, what are the key factors for partnership? Uh, compromise. Yeah, so we try to go 50-50 on all our decision making and the design process. And then respect. Uh, so we keep things very professional uh, in the office. And lastly, admiration. We look up to each other's individual talents and skills and what each other brings towards the office. And that's how we feel we keep office moving forward. So that's about it for today. Thank you. Thank you. Mayam uh, Buntag. My name is architect Gigi Canizares. I'm the managing partner of Canizares Architects Design Company or CAD Company for short. I'm here to talk about the architectural corporation practice. Uh, going back to history, uh, CAD Company did not always start as a corporation. It started as a sole proprietorship with the name of J.M. Canizares Architect under my father, architect Jose Mari Canizares F.U.A.P. Um, he's been practicing since 1972. In 2013, I joined his firm, uh, but then it was still a sole proprietorship during that time. And in 2015, my younger brother, architect Kenzo, also joined in as well. Uh, it was during that time we started exploring the option of an architectural corporate practice. So in the traditional sense, a uh, corporation is composed of five individuals forming the corporation altogether. Uh, in recent years though, uh, it's been, uh, there's been a law on uh, one-man corporation, but I'm not quite sure of if the UAP has adopted the rules and regulations for accepting such. But going back to the five 
uh, five individuals that composed of a corporation during the inception. Uh, we explored the idea because we decided, we all decided, each of us had our own talents and skill sets that would be beneficial for the corporation. So that was formed together uh, with the two other personnel we had was our two uh, loyal employees, which we now call as partners for our practice. Um, architectural practice has a, it's a different different playing field. It's a different ball ball game in itself, but it doesn't really translate to higher income or higher source of revenues. Uh, I would say it's just more of uh, giving opportunities to be able to deal with corporate clients in that sense. Because in a way, uh, on the tax angle or the tax side consideration of it, uh, corporate clients do look and consider into hiring services only of corporate corporations as well due to the value-added tax factor they can get uh, from it. So if you're considering uh, starting up your practice in architecture, you have three choices. You have your sole proprietorship, your partnership, and your corporation. Personally, I think it would be wise to start out with a sole proprietorship first. And who knows, somewhere along the line, same as how we started up ourselves, you meet someone or you partner up with someone whom you think you share the same vision and passion of architecture, then it would be a wise move to move up into a corporate practice. So you and your network and the, other, the network of your partner or soon-to-be partner, you join it all together and you create a bigger network all together. So just like what I said on our sense, uh, each of us has a has our own skill sets to endorse. So this is what we provide and contribute to our corporate practice. Don't forget to follow us on all social media platform. Click like, subscribe, and follow. Thank you for watching. See you again in our next video.